Hello everyone, my name is Fox. This is an updated video on how to increase the performance on your GPT Win 2. I'm going to be deleting my other video because it really pertained more to my prototype as opposed to, to the retail units that are out and about right now. It is also far more simpler. You don't have to touch the BIOS. There's only one very unique uh, instance where you'll need to do that and you'll have to pay attention to that yourself. You can see it in Intel's XTU uh, program. If your system, by default, the GPU Win 2 runs at 7 watts. If you notice that at any time that it hits any type of thermal wall, uh, either heat or energy or anything, and it kind of down uh, clocks the power profile to 4.5 watt, more than likely it's Intel's uh, DPTF, their Dynamic Power and Thermal Framework. Uh, I'll show you ways that you can disable that, mostly in the BIOS, because there are a few things that we have to kind of adjust and make sure that nothing gets in our way. So first things first, you want to do Windows R, which is the run command, and type powercfg.cpl, and that'll get you to the power options. And go ahead and go change uh, change, power and set, change plan settings, then change advanced power settings. Inside here, you want to go to Intel graphics settings, graphics power, both these are set to maximum performance. The same thing can happen if you right click on your desktop and go to Intel's graphics uh, control panel. This is where you'll be able to see if you go to power, you can see this is set to maximum performance on battery and plugged in. So we'll go ahead and close this out. This should do the same thing. Go ahead and check on Intel after you've set that to make sure that it's set. If you go to processor power management, minimum can be set to 5%. That's fine. It's just important that maximum is also set to 100% for each. Even if you set these to 95%, that will, in a lot of instances, stops uh, turbo frequency from happening on the CPU. So you'll be stuck at 1.6 gigahertz, which will affect a lot of things, especially for emulation. Now we've done that. The next thing you have to do is go ahead and download Intel's XTU. Uh, which is Intel X Extreme Tuning Utility. Uh, that's This is available on Intel's website. You just go ahead and download the latest version of Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. You go ahead and download and install it, and this is the type of interface that you're going to see. The first steps that you need to do is make sure a stable undervolt. Um, by default, the tool that I will be, the batch file that I'll be recommending made by Cifrei, it defaults to negative 50, which covers I want to say 95%. Most people should be able to hit that. Very few will be unlucky enough to not hit negative 50 millivolt. Some people will go up above that. Now, I have negative 60 millivolt. One thing worth trying is 5 millivolt at a time on both CPU and GPU. You can see GPU right here. Um, both of these can be set and applied. Uh, volt. You can change voltages differently. Uh, it's important to note that when you try these and click apply, that you want to make sure that you test DirectX 12, 10, 11, 9, uh, OpenGL, Vulkan. You want to test all of these APIs as not every API is going to be stable at a, at a certain undervolt. If you only test one thing and you find that it's stable, you'll find that other games aren't stable and you'll crash. It's most likely that you've set too extreme of an undervolt. The Even though it does sound counterintuitive, again, undervolting will increase performance. And I'll make another video of that explaining why. I really have to get on the stick and start uh, doing more videos. I've been wanting to do this updated performance guide for a long time now. I really do apologize for that. I just, um, for lack of a better word, I've just been lazy about it. Uh, in any event, you need that. You can experiment with your undervolts within this utility. There are a few reasons why I recommend the batch utility, and I'll explain as I go along those. One thing that you're going to see right here is your package TDP. Right here, it says one watt. If you find that you're running programs and some some of them are going slower than videos that I have done. So you've seen performances of videos that I've done and you're getting less performance than that. One thing that you're going to want to check and see if your package CDP is at 7 watt or whatever wattage you specified. If it's under that, it's most likely uh, Intel's DPTF, which we can show you how to disable. Um, you're going to want to disable that and that should no longer be the case. Again, it doesn't happen for everyone, but every now and again it does. And you can go ahead and do that. That's just something to be mindful of. So now, if you go in the comment section in the description field, I'm going to link to this XTU batch file made by Cifrei, who is an excellent community, me uh, community member. Um, a lot of these videos that I want to be doing, I'll be highlighting some stuff that community members have done. Cifrei has done some neat stuff, especially um, like an SSD uh, expansion to use 2280 drives, which is pretty uh, neat. Hunam has done as well. Joe Dest, who is uh, an admin on the forum, has made a nice Google Sheet uh, that has shown compatibility for uh, lots of different games, which is great, even outside of the GB2 and 2, as it's a baseline for low end systems. So, if we have a big sheet saying performance metrics for a lot of different games on this, 
pretty much anything that's above this um in, in terms of performance will be useful and worthwhile so i really recommend it uh hopefully everyone can get behind it but for right now as a community spotlight we're going to be look, looking at Cifre's xtu batch file right here is where you're going to specify your undervolt uh, by default the one that comes that in the link that i sent you this is going to be set to 50. so you're, you're going to be setting this to what you find to be your stable frame rate so this is what the file looks like when you download it, it might be a text file. So you're just gonna make sure that you replace .text to .bat. Excuse me. All right, so if we go in here, we go to view, one of the things that you wanna, that might be here is file name extensions. That'll be checked, you're gonna wanna uncheck that. So if we go to, let's go to, uh, let's go to, oh, let me go in here, go to desktop. So you can see that I can't see the batch file, but if we go to file name extensions, you can see that it says .bat. So you're gonna to wanna to go into view and make sure that this is at least checked because you are you don't wanna just put .bat out of it because it might be .bat.txt and it'll still be a text file. You wanna make sure you erase .txt and make it a bat file. So after you got that, you wanna go ahead and run as administrator. So there's a few things that I like this tool. Number one, it makes it super easy to just select a TDP. My favorite one is 8.25 watt. It's the best efficiency. And you'll be able to set your undervolt as well. And you can see that this closed. Uh, wait, I don't have to switch anything. So that closed that. We can make sure that XTU is closed here. And most importantly, if we go to services.msc, we can see that, let's go ahead and refresh this. Do, 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 refresh we can guarantee that XTU is not running. Now the point of this is that XTU service, when it is running, it is taking two to 3% of your system's resources. Uh, and that's resources that we really need to be going to games and stuff. So we don't want this to be running if we can help it. And the bat service that Cifre has created automatically closes it after, um, after it's set it. And it will retain those settings. It doesn't need to be running. So that's why I really recommend this tool. It makes things super simple. That's all we need to do. We just need to take a look at those three things. Make sure the power profile is set to maximum performance. Install Intel XTU, run this batch file. For most, for most people, you should be done at this point. If you're finding that your system is overriding your TDP and setting it to 4.5 watt, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the BIOS. Let's go to restart. When you're in the BIOS, when you see the GPD logo, you just wanna hold the Dell key. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. Wait for this to restart, wait for a GPD logo. And there it is, we'll hold down the Dell key. Now again, this is a, a portrait style screen, so remember that you're going to be looking at the BIOS uh, portrait style, like this. So we're gonna be using these keys. Uh, you're gonna go into, do, 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 where are we gonna be going? Um, yeah, actually, I forgot where this is. Give me one second. Okay, actually right in front of my face. Okay, so you're gonna go into advanced, thermal configuration right here, DPTF configuration, and you're gonna to wanna to set this to disabled. Doing that, we'll just go ahead and go to save changes and exit. And that's all you'll need to do. You don't need to touch anything else in the BIOS and only need to touch that if you are noticing your system overriding the values that you've set. Outside of that, that's all you need to do to increase the performance of your GPU in 2 because you're going to increasing the TDP as well as uh, applying an undervolt uh, just to let the system open up to its maximum potential. And that'll allow you to get the best performance that you possibly can get. It will uh, impact your per your battery performance. Um, obviously, we're going to be using uh, more wattage, so that's going to be the case. Anywho, um, that's how you'll increase the performance on your GPU in 2 Thank you so much for watching.